Today's video is going to showcase one of, if not the main inherent problem with game modes like Deep Arcamedia, and it has to do with the fact that you can't just mod your way through bad RNG, featuring the Spectre Vandal. Now, this thing is actually a really stellar meta weapon, for some reason I just can't see that because I'm such a noob. Please do let me know down in the comments. I mean, I've managed to turn it into a decent secondary for most of Warframe's content, but you can kind of do that with anything, right? Let's take a quick look at the stats before getting into why I think D may need to kind of go back to the drawing board with the types of weapons that are allowed into the Archimedia pool, along with a couple of half-baked suggestions too, as always. Disclaimer, none of the testing you'll see later on was particularly scientific or had a method to them. I just eyeballed it basically to see what worked best. So the best thing about this corpus mining laser is that it's got 100 accuracy and that it is a secondary weapon, meaning that it has access to a bunch of awesome mods, which still kind of didn't matter in the end anyway, as you'll see. But for a mining laser, 20% crit chance and 2x crit damage isn't too bad, I suppose. It's even got decent status at 28%. Unfortunately, none of that comes close to making up for the absolutely terrible base damage of 22. That's it. 22 damage. Probably why it's got a 1.4x ribbon disposition, because no one uses this piece of shiny garbage. Perhaps I could fix it with a ribbon, I said to myself. Wish I could do that with real life problems, to be honest. It's just one of the many totally invaluable voices in my head, trying to give me great ideas again. Anyways, I got this one from Kyle, reliable man as always, and it was so close to being perfect too. So close. Or at least, that's what I thought at the beginning. What ended up happening is I took the Spectre Vandal with this Riven out into Deep Archimedia a few weeks ago, and it just didn't do much if at all against the enemies there. But luckily I had, I believe, Ember and the Prisma Oma to rely on, so it wasn't too big of a deal, but I didn't feel like just leaving it there for some reason. Lacking satisfaction, I said, surely there's something I could do to turn this dinky little thing into a boss beater, or at least something somewhat useful. Well, after a bunch of forma, 40 Riven rolls and well over 100,000 Kuva spent, this is what I settled with. Which may look bad at first glance, but let me explain. Sorry for the interruption guys, yeah ads suck, especially on YouTube, but how about a helpful recommendation? I bet you all buy your games on Steam, which is great, but what if there's a way to get those games and some free stuff on the side? Well all you gotta do is just buy them on Green Man Gaming, where even if you get something at full price, you'll still receive benefits in the form of XP, which is part of their loyalty program. All the Steam keys sold here are also sourced directly from the publishers, so no middlemen or scammy nonsense. I've also found that sometimes there's better deals here than on even Steam. Not to mention that a portion of any money spent on Green Man Gaming does go towards ecosystem restoration initiatives, which is pretty cool to see. It's kinda nice to know that your dollar would go further than just ending up in some OnlyFans thoughts bathtub. So the next time you're thinking about buying games, it's probably worth checking out Green Man Gaming through the links in the description. Even just clicking on them to see what's on sale today does help out the channel a lot. Please note that for adblock users, the links in the description may get flagged. Do not be alarmed. Your internet history is safe. Purchases made on the site are recorded solely for the purposes of crediting the channel appropriately. It helps Mellow Affords some time for the month. So yeah, feel free to whitelist and save those links, save yourself some money, and get gaming today. Generally stats like crit chance, crit damage, base damage, were all things you'd want to boost as much as possible, but on a weapon like the Spectre Vandal, where it's already lacking quite a lot in a couple of areas, there's only so much a Riven could do. Even at 1.4x disposition, high crit chance and crit damage are great, but just could not make up for the terribly low base damage. And if I rolled for tons of base damage, well, that would then crank up the damage of all damage types, which was not what I wanted exactly, because against enemies with extremely high amounts of armor, you're probably going to have to rely on some form of armor removal or bleed procs to bypass the insane levels of damage reduction. And I found out that even with high amounts of slash damage, I had to stack about 25 to 30 ticks simultaneously for the enemy, a level 200 steel path rogue culverin in this case, 
to be taken down in an amount of time that I'd consider reasonably quick. I also needed viral for its status buff, but I had to be careful to not stack so much of that damage type as to hinder the Spectre Vandal's ability to inflict sufficient bleed procs, so it was a tough balancing act, and even then, I still needed a bit more from the other stats, namely base damage again. And that is why I've decided to sort of settle with this setup, thinking it's the best I could do of a compromised situation. I'd say it's still not really sufficient for use against really high level murmur enemies, or any enemy for that matter, especially these critters you find in Deep Archimedia, and we're not even taking into account potential debuffs. You can sort of make it work with a bit of help from frames like Harrow and Ember, I suppose. Harrow for boosting crits and fire rate to levels beyond insanity. Ember to strip armor from enemies, which, to be fair, makes stuff easy for every weapon out there now, doesn't it? I mean, the Spectre Vandal that I have now does work great against quote-unquote regular enemies, you know, the stuff you find in world bounties, ESO, most of the star chart. But so do pretty much all other weapons in Warframe, right? Especially when you put this much of effort into it. All that wasted time with the Spectre Vandal, and God knows I wasted a lot of time in my life, it did get me thinking. Sure, some weapons are going to be weaker than others, and there are going to be complete duds that you should avoid, but what if all these weapons were tiered, and then put into randomized pools and game modes like Archimedia based on those tiers? And I'm not talking about these tier list made by YouTubers, I'm talking about DE themselves categorizing weapons based on a calculated stat like, I don't know, DPS for example, and then making it so that game modes like Archimedia have only, say, tier B and up put into the randomized pool. It sounds pretty complicated once you think about all the variables and potential issues that could arise, but this is what DE has turned Warframe into. Not my fault, I don't think so. I just wish I could use any weapon and have it perform well enough in Deep Archimedia, even if it takes some effort and lots of spending. In the case of the Spectre Vandal, either I did it really wrong, or it just wasn't quite good enough. Maybe with the impending armor and enemy health rework, things will probably change. Drastically. As always, please do check out the links in the description to the Discord server and merch store, or Ko-Fi and Patreon if you think the content here is neat. Your help is very, very much appreciated. Otherwise, it's totally fine. You could also just click on one of the other videos here to watch more.